I'll just give you a little background on myself. I have been in the field of clinical research for a couple of decades, I like to say, and I started out as a coordinator in academia and then transitioned to industry and held a variety of roles, first one being a monitor, then a study manager, then in quality roles, and for the last, I'd say about six years or so, I've been doing independent consulting and training, and that's where my focus is right now. So I've worked on both sides of the fence, so to speak. We are going to talk about the 20, Title 21 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 11, Required Components for Electronic Medical Records. The objectives today are listed here in terms of defining our source documents, and we'll look at both the FDA and ICH in terms of what their definitions are. We're going to explain the required characteristics for source documents in any form because let's not forget what source is. Source is the first place information is captured, and that doesn't always mean that it's a written piece of paper. Could be an x-ray, could be a number of different things. So wherever the first place is that the information is captured. We're also gonna go and describe the requirements of electronic source per part 11. We'll apply these concepts to the EMR at research sites, and then we can talk about implementing a contingency plan planning for electronic source document deficiencies and manage the site and sponsor activities regarding those electronic medical records. I actually am going to open up your line again and just ask some of the challenges that you may have faced already with the use of electronic records at sites. So I'm going to unmute you and go ahead and if you can tell me anything that you've come up against so far. Yeah, um, I guess just off the top of my head, if you have different investigators at a single site, like different doctors that perform the procedure that we're looking at, that they copy information into the medical record differently, I know it's a big thing. So um, one doctor will do it and lay out the information in a very clean, concise way, and then there'll be another doctor that may either muddy it up with a lot of extra information, makes it harder to find the information we're looking for, or not give enough information in uh, whatever the, the note is that they're putting. Okay, and that would be, actually, that would be true, I guess, for either handwritten or electronic mm -hmm. records, yeah. right? So do you find that if it's an electronic record, is it, does it maybe force them to be a little bit more concise or not really? Uh, because I know sometimes I, I, the system, go ahead. Yeah. I, yeah, I've seen it both ways, I guess, that, mm -hmm. yeah, that they'll, they'll, go on and on and it makes it tough to find what we're looking for or they'll sure. keep it really short and the information isn't quite there what we need so okay but then okay, yeah, so also challenges more specific i guess to electronic medical records is uh the coordinators may not know exactly what we're looking for and may it, like it may not be captured i guess exactly information that's specific for the study is compared to standard of care if they're strictly mm -hmm. using medical records there may be issues with getting the information we need that way, so. Right, and I do find sometimes with the electronic medical records that they're kind of confined to certain fields and sometimes can't do a robust enough narrative sometimes. Mm -hmm. I find that that's yeah. a, an issue sometimes with the way their, their systems are set up. What I have found is uh, a lot of times when, let's say academic institutions, they decide to go, okay, we're going to the electronic record format. Clinical research is sort of an afterthought. They usually have set up their program and set up everything, and then it's like, oh, clinical research, now what? You know, what are we mm -hmm. going to do with this? And that, yeah. that's where you're not allowed to really take a look at these records. I've been very encouraged, though, as I go around and do training with sites. I have heard more than a few sites that actually now have the ability to focus just on the patients that they need to. In other words, if you're a monitor going to a site, you let them know when you're coming, and what they can do is assign you temporary credentials, and it would allow you to log on that morning that you come, and it will, the credentialing process would sort of end at the end of that day. So you'd only be allowed to get into the system for that particular day with the credentials. And it does allow you, their systems do allow you to just focus on the particular patients you need, which is great, because that's usually been the problem where we could not focus and just have our monitors go in and just look at the one or two or however many clinical research subjects without actually seeing 
their whole system and everyone's records. So I am very encouraged to see that there are some institutions that are now doing this and have that ability. So I think in the future things will get easier, hopefully, as more mm -hmm. centers adapt this, this sort of system. So I don't know if you've encountered that at any of the sites you monitor yet where they can mm -hmm. where they actually can give you those credentials for the day and you could actually just focus, go in, see the real electronic record, not certified copies, yeah. and just, you know, focus on those patients. I, I have experienced that, yeah. Yeah, great. So I'm hoping more and more people do get on board mm -hmm. with that. Okay, so let's let's proceed. So let's take a look here at what the FDA requires. We know that they're re required by FDA regulation to have you know, follow Alcoa basically, and now it's Alcoa C with the complete being added with the ICH E6 revision. Two, they've added that one piece, and now the FDA has just issued a guidance, sort of adopting that ICH E6 revision two. So we have to make sure, of course, that the PI has adequate and accurate case histories. And case histories is how the FDA does refer to both the source as well as the case report forms. They look at the whole, the whole piece of it, shall we say, and call it a case history. So the terminology is a little bit different. We see source documents referred to more with ICH. 